Today I did something on Gran Turismo 7 that if you watch this channel you know I don't like. I went grinding. I went grinding on Gran Turismo 7, I raced in single player events as part of the cafe book, as part of the championships to get credits and get into a place where I can get more credits. It's a big part of the game. I don't like grinding but I feel like I've just got to see it. What is it? Did I enjoy it? You can see here we're in this tournament, this championship group four cars across real world circuits like the Nordschleife, Catalonia as well and the cars are racing side by side, cars are going off the track, the AI is trying to overtake over the curbs, there's advantages going, oh where's it gone? It all looks very 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 exciting. What's the reality? Let's find out, let's get into it. So for my first race I'm actually, I'm not at a real world track, I'm at Trial Mountain which kind of, I was like oh okay I thought it'd be a real world championship. But we're here and I've detuned the Porsche Living Legend, the car that you got if you pre-ordered the game. This is like the cover car, it was in the trailers, this is the, was a hero car, the game. this was meant to sell the game I think. It's even got a fan on top, like it's an air conditioning unit. So I've detuned this car to get it into the 700pp limit. And let's see how we do here. So, importantly, if you have a look, look at the map in the top right, you can see Mr. Yamanaka is already halfway down the back straight here at Trial Mountain. I mean, that is an absolute age. So again, the, the you know, it's a bit of a setup here. I would rather race... This is not how it was portrayed in that trailer, was it? I'd rather race cars aggressively close wheel to wheel than kind of having a rolling roadblock like this, but that's the rolling roadblock is what we've got. And the leader is 30 seconds up the road. So it's essentially a time trial. So I'm time trialing here to see if I can catch up with that 30 seconds by the end of the race. So I'm zooming forward here. Let's see, let's see where we end up in a couple laps. So it's actually lap four out of five before I catch Valeria Gallo and Yamanaka here. And we're coming to the very end of the lap at Trial Mountain. So there wasn't actually a lot of margin in this. I'm not someone that wants to, at this moment in time, look very scientifically about what's the exact perfect build for getting the maximum PP per square inch foot, whatever. I wanted to drive the Living Legend because it's a car that, frankly, I haven't really driven in the game, but it looks insane. It's got the active air on the back. And it looks like we've just about got ourselves a race here. So I overtake Valeria again on the back straight. Then I go a little bit mad. I think, right, I'm going to do a proper time trial lap here. I'm going to go as fast as I can. And obviously I crash, which is really bad. So then I have to... <laughs> like there's a, almost a massive accident. I have to catch them up. But we do end up winning this race. So we end up winning this race with a little bit of margin to spare which is quite nice. Then it was on to Catalonia for race number two. And to be honest, this was the low point of the championship. It, I just, I mean, sometimes can, I like Catalonia when I'm racing competitively, if I'm doing top split dailies or something like that. And by the way, if you want to see me race multiplayer at the very highest level, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. If you're subscribed already, thank you very much. And you know what we're about on this channel. But I found Catalonia here in this single player. The, the weather didn't really change. It just almost put me to sleep. So Catalonia wasn't that excited. I tried to take out some of the drivers to see if I could actually just save during the last race, if I could put them so far down the points, but I didn't do a very good job of it. Then we went to the Nordschleife. We actually went to the Nürburgring 24-hour circuit, the, the combined variant. And this is the first time I really enjoyed it, and it made me think about when I was younger, when I was a kid, and there were less distractions. That's when I really got into Gran Turismo, I got into Forza, these sort of racing games and that feel of it's not about being on the absolute limit like I do now in competitive online multiplayer it's more about just being in a fun sort of groove and driving with a little bit of panache trying to use all of the track trying to you know break as late as possible and make the corner so again it's not about scientifically being super super fast that's what I do now online it's just about having fun and sort of feeling stylish and especially here with the sun setting in Germany, and I have driven this track in real life, and I I always, compare, when I drive it in a game, I always compare against it. And this is one of still the few occasions, and I've done this track in iRacing 24 hours and stuff like that. It's one of the few occasions where I've really felt like I'm actually there in that part of the world. It, it captured it really, really, really nicely. And there's a point in the race where I'm just, I'm driving against myself, I've overtaken everyone else. And I really, really, really got into it. And it was actually quite relaxing. 
And this is where Gran Turismo 7, look, this is, is absolutely unbeatable. To do this on the console, you can do it on a pad. This is, I don't care about the people that want to slate GT7 at every opportunity. You cannot beat this. And if you're watching and you and you just enjoy racing on Gran Turismo 7, you enjoy driving, then you'll get it. So overall, you know, we won the championship. We unlocked some stuff. We got some credits. It's not something that I want to do again and again and again. I, would, I don't think I could do that championship again. But by doing it, it did make me think, look, I should do more race at Norge Life. I should just do a custom race from like afternoon into evening get some legendary machinery up there, kind of have the AI cars go as fast as they can go, and just have some fun. It's not all about being competitive online. There's a, there's a space for that. And often online racing in GT7, you, you kind of want as much parity and as much um, fairness in the settings as possible. You don't want, don't want too much dynamism. But when you're just racing for yourself, trying for yourself, you, you kind of just want to have the most emotive evocative visceral experience you can and this did remind me that gt7 is still the king on that so did i enjoy the grinding overall uh, not really i haven't turned into a big grinder but it made me appreciate the single player side of gt7 a little bit more so i will be doing that a bit more on this channel let me know what you thought about this video again if you've seen a few of these make sure you hit that subscribe button it massively helps the channel out i really appreciate you and i'll see you all some more videos here by the way but I'll see you next time.